In this video, you will find what are the top 4 Canadian dividend stocks that you should watch in 2022 if you want to make some passive income. Hey, how's it going guys and welcome to the North Investor where we all about personal finance on our path to financial freedom. Following my last year video on the exact same topic, I've decided to do the same but for 2022. My evaluation criteria are quite simple. First, I don't want to take a company only for its dividend, so I will be checking out at the business model of the company, so how are they making the revenues and who are their customers. And I also check obviously their financial report to see if there is a good financial health to the company. And obviously I will finish by the sector analysis to be sure that the company that I choose will potentially continue to perform well in the next year. Now, let's jump to my first pick. From the north coast of Quebec in Canada, we found our first contender, which is Labrador Aranor. To see why this company is one of the top Canadian dividend stocks, in my opinion, let's check out their business model. LEF is a company that gives some exposure to the investor on the iron ore market. This exposure is provided by its royalty commission and minority equity interest in the iron ore company of Canada. These iron ore pellets are first extracted from the mines of north coast of Quebec after they are being concentrated and shipped by the Cetil port. IOC is operated by Rio Tinto, which is one of the most renowned firms in the mining sector. It's also super interesting because the materials produced by this company can be used at many different ways. For example, the iron ore pellet that is produced by Labrador Iron Ore uh, can be transformed at 90% in steel. And there are also many different ways to use the steel, for example, to build infrastructure, materials, or machines. For the financial performance of LEF, we can see that in the third quarter of 2021, they have highly benefited from the higher iron ore prices and pellet premiums, which has been reflected in their revenues that has increased of more than 20 million dollars compared to the same quarter so the third quarter of 2020 and for the net income per share or if you prefer the earnings per share for the third quarter of 2021 they were about 1.64 dollars which represent an increase of 82 percent compared to 2020 and this is the same for the cash flow per share for the third quarter of 2021 that were about 199 per share uh, and this represent a 333 percent increase compared to last year. However, we can see that LEF has way less cash compared to what are their debts and liabilities. And we can see it by the super high dividend yield that is offered to their shareholders because of the special dividends that they have been offering lately. And we can also notice it by the payout ratio that is higher than 100%, which means that eventually they might need to cut a little bit of their dividends if they want to be sustainable on the long term. Another interesting point about this company is the fact that they have a lot of customers and a lot of their market is focused in China. It can be considered as a threat or as an opportunity and personally I will see it as an opportunity. I think that because the market of China is really the most interesting one on the demographic side. However, with the high dividend that they do have at the moment, I think that it might be a little bit hard to continue giving some special dividends but I think that if they are able to continue on this way, uh, it really encouraged the investor to go and invest in, uh, in them company. So guys, I invite you to go check out their website if you want more detail about the company. And of course, I will potentially do a future video on Labrador Iron Ore in the future. How can I talk about the dividend aristocrat stocks in Canada without mentioning the financial sector? So my pick number two is Manulife. Since I consider that the five big banks in Canada are currently overvalued, I've decided to present to you today Manulife. As you can guess by the name, Manulife is an insurance company and it's currently the number one in Canada and the 11th one in the world. Its business model obviously is mainly focused on the insurance that they are proposing, just like the life insurance, the health and dental insurance, the travel one, 
and the mortgage protection. Just like LEF, Manulife has a high exposure to the Asian market, mainly on the Chinese side. Indeed, in 1995, Manulife was the first company in Canada to open an office in China. This company worth more than $50 billion and has some super great valuation measures as we can see by their PE ratio that is around 7 and also their prices to sales on, that is less than 1 and the price to book that is approximately at 1 as well. As any insurance company, Manulife has a lot of cash, so about $35 billion to be able to pay their debt that is around $20 billion. And they also have a great, great, great uh, operating cash flow of, of about $23 billion. And what is interesting is that their dividend is almost at 5% and their payout ratio is only 33%, which means that they only use about 33% of their return earnings to be able to pay their shareholders. For my third pick, I've decided to go swim in the oil sector and present to you a company that is not necessarily known a lot by many Canadians since uh, there is a lot of competition in that field. I've chose to present you Pembina. Many of you guys, as you have seen in my previous videos, might be interesting to invest in this sector since all the Russian crisis at the moment that might boost the price of oil. And you might also have seen that I present a lot Enbridge in my videos. I personally think that Enbridge and Pembina are the two best picks that you can take in that sector in Canada. I personally own the two of them and I'm pretty happy about the return that I have. On one side, you have Enbridge. So Enbridge is a blue chip dividend aristocrat in Canada that gives a great dividend, but that also provides a certain stability, I would say, to your investment. On the other side, you have Pembina that is quite a smaller company compared to Enbridge. It has about $25 billion of market cap. This company also provides to you a great dividend that has been slightly cut uh, recently. But what is really also interesting about this stock is the fact that it also has some great potential of growth. And also my favorite part, it is giving some monthly dividends. Pempina is a leader in its field since more than 65 years now. And as we can see with their business model, they are really focusing on the distribution of their energy all around Canada. Just like Enbridge, they will do the extraction, the distribution, and the storage of their energy. The old companies, just like Pembina and Enbridge, are often criticized because of their environmental impact on the earth. On this side, and by the ESG principle, Pembina has recently agreed to cut off 30% the emission intensity of their gas by 2030. For the financial overview of Pembina, we can see that they have increased their total revenue of more than 44% compared to 2020. Uh, their earnings per share, so their APS has increased of more than 94% and we have their cash flow from operating activities per share has increased of more than 113%. We can see that Pembina doesn't have much cash compared to their debts, which means that they are using a lot of debt compared to their equity to finance the business. However, they are still able to manage and to have some great operating cash flow and some great leverage free cash flow that has increased since last year. Pembina is acting in a market that is pretty controversial, but I think that if you want some oil exposure, you can aim potentially for both Pembina first if you want some monthly payment and also if you want some opportunity of growth more than Enbridge in my opinion. And if you want more like a stable blue chip of dividends that gives some about 6% of dividends per year, well, in this case, you can go for Enbridge. And both are really some great opportunities that you can have in your portfolio in my opinion. Opinion. And for my last pick that I've decided to share with you today, I wanted to present you my favorite REIT, which is Ryocan. And if you haven't saw it yet, I really highly invite you to go check out the video that I've made on this company last year when they have cut their dividend of more than 40%. It is super interesting to see why I am super, super bullish on this company. And why I love this uh, company is the fact that they are giving some monthly payment just like Pembina. And also what is really interesting is the fact that they have a lot to catch to come back to the level that they were in 2020 just before the crash. And still I am at more than 70% of growth on this company since I've bought it in the summer of 2020. It's super insane. It is really incredible considering the fact that I also earned the 10 to 12% of dividends that 
were happening uh, back in 2020 in that summer uh, and before the cut that they have made in 2020 in the December. Even if they have cut the dividend of more than half now, I think that it will potentially re-increase re in the future and at the moment it currently is between 4 to 5% which is very good. Raokan is considered as a REIT which represents a real estate investment trust. It is acting mainly in the retail sector with more than 200 buildings all around the Canada in the different big markets. It currently has a market cap of over $14 billion and in 2020 it was considered as the second biggest company of its type in Canada. It mainly owns a different bunch of supermarkets such as the Lawrence Allen Center in Toronto, the Chapman Mills Marketplace in Ottawa and the Burlington Center in Burlington. But it also offers some residential and office spaces. Isn't that crazy that you could own all of that? They are working also on different projects that could combine the commercial, the residential but also the office space. So as you can see guys, this company has a sky of opportunity. When we look at the financial analysis of Raokan, we can see that the revenues have been stagnating since 2020, since the lockdown of all the retail uh, places have been having a huge impact on Raokan. And this is why the revenues also have been decreasing since 2019. However, what is really interesting to see is that uh, in 2020, the EPS were negative, but now we have some almost $2 uh, per share of EPS, which means that the EPS have restart to increase once again. They also have phenomenon great profit margin and operating margin that are both around 50%. And we can also see that the revenue since the last quarter have been increasing of more than 20% and that the earning, as I told you, have increased of more than 200%. And so this company doesn't have much cash as well compared to their debt. But we can see that usually the dividend for this company is around four, between 4 to 5% and the payout ratio is only of 50%, which is a good news. Recently, this stock has been performing super well and I think that it will continue in this way knowing the fact that the real estate is a great edge against the inflation. I think that this kind of stock is really great to face the inflation but also to diversify yourself. Plus, as I shared with you with Pembina earlier, Ryokan is a great to receive some monthly payment with some potential growth in the years to come. There are plenty of other great, great dividend aristocrat stocks that I could have included in that list, like Enbridge, Bell, Telus, uh, the Big Five Banks. But I think that the four stocks that I've presented to you today were the stock that I will personally look for in 2022. Those offer a great diversification, some potential growth, and also a lot of passive income. Let me know in the comment section what are your favorite Canadian dividend aristocrat stocks to buy in 2022. And for everyone that is new, I invite you to come and join the North family by subscribing to the channel for only $0.0. And if you haven't saw it yet, I highly invite you to go check out my top 3 Canadian ETFs that you need to watch in 2022. It's gonna be right over here and I will see you there.